So a lot of people are not going to be able to figure this problem out, not because it is difficult, but uh, primarily because they don't understand the question. And in particular, they may not understand what some of these very important math terms uh, and math words mean, like integer. But uh, who knows? I think you are looking at this problem saying this is super easy. But uh, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Seven more than twice an integer is between negative three and nine. Find all possible values. Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but uh, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And then of course, I'm gonna fully explain this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so first things first. Uh, one, we have a math problem, a math word problem. So I always like to use the rule of three. Read a problem at least three times to try to figure out what's going on, and in particular, Make sure you understand the question. So this problem involves this word right here. Okay, seven more than twice an integer. We have to be crystal clear on what an integer is because if we don't understand what an integer is, we're not gonna be able to figure out this problem, right? So that's gonna be one aspect of this problem. Of course, I'll explain what, what an integer is here in a second. But we have this integer and of course, it's uh, seven more than twice uh, this integer, but it's between these values in uh, negative three and nine. So right here, this between part is uh, kind of, you know, a flag telling ourselves, oh, we need to set up an inequality. OK, so we got to figure out what this is. And then this right here is we need to set up an inequality. And let's go ahead and get into it right now. OK, so we're dealing with an integer, right? So I'm just going to just say, let's let x equal an integer, okay? So that's what we're talking about. But what is an integer? Well, let's go ahead and just quickly review. This is very, very important stuff. Maybe use a different color here. Okay, so on a real number line, all right? So here is zero. And we have, uh, well, actually, let's kind of do a, a quick, quick, fast review because this is really important as well. I'm trying to draw a straight line. That's a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> so here is uh, the real number line. So in mathematics, the set of real numbers is tremendously important. Now, the set of real numbers is uh, composed of, of a uh, subset of different type of numbers. The first numbers are called natural numbers or counting numbers. If you look at our, the digits of your hand, right, you got one, two, three, four, et cetera. These are called the counting numbers. This is what we count with, one, two, three, four, et cetera. The counting numbers or the natural numbers, all right? This is what uh, these type of numbers are called. Now, these again are a subset of the real numbers. Okay, these are on the real number line. And now if we throw in zero, we have what type of numbers? Well, these numbers right here are called the whole numbers. Now, if we take, uh, these positive whole numbers, and then we throw on some negative whole numbers over here, same numbers, but we'll put negative signs in front of these numbers. These whole numbers right here, all these numbers are what we call the integers, okay? These are the integers, and usually it's just one big I uh, to kind of refer to that set. But this is important stuff, okay? If you're taking mathematics, you gotta understand uh, these different uh, subsets. And then there's two other uh, numbers that I'm not mentioning. Do you know what they are? Okay. Well, if you do put that into the comment section as well, and I'll talk about the different, uh, two more types of, uh, sets of numbers that are com uh, composed of the real numbers or a subset of the real numbers. Those would be the rational numbers and the irrational numbers. Okay. Now the rational numbers are fractions that we can make out of integers. So things like two thirds or negative two thirds, and then numbers that we cannot uh, express as a, a fraction, okay? I.e. numbers that are not rational or irrational. And these would be numbers like pi, for example, uh, 3.14, uh, et cetera, et cetera, or the square root of two. Uh, these type of things, or these type of numbers are irrational numbers, okay? 
All right, so just a quick overview of the real numbers and specifically the integers because, you know, you might come across a prompt that uses the word whole number or county number, natural number, or rational number. Got to understand what these math terms are. Okay, so that is what an integer is. And now let's go back to our problem. So we have seven more than twice an integer. So we'll let a variable, that variable x, represent an integer, right? Because we're trying to solve this problem and uh, we don't know what integer, but let's just let x equal this integer, okay? So there's two aspects to this problem. We have seven more than twice an integer. Let's figure out, let's come up with an algebraic expression for that part. And then this is going to be between negative uh, three and nine. So we'll set up an inequality once we have this part right here kind of constructed from an algebraic standpoint. All right, so seven more. What does this right here mean, seven more? We're gonna take uh, seven and add it onto something. But what are we gonna add it onto? Uh, twice an integer. So maybe like two times x, right? And that's exactly what we're going to do. So two x plus seven is seven more. This is seven more than twice an integer, right? Seven more than twice an integer. Make sure that you don't multiply seven, okay? A lot of uh, students get confused with this. This is why it's so important to do two things. One, you gotta read these problems carefully, but two, you need to practice solving various type of prompts. All right, so this is uh, our expression, two x plus seven for this part. Seven more than twice an integer is between. So this, whatever this is, is between these numbers, negative three and nine. All right, so we're gonna set up an inequality now. So 2x plus 7, or 7 more than twice an integer, is uh, between negative 3 and 9. Of course, negative 3 is going to be over here, and 9 is going to be over here. All right, so at this point, what we need to do is solve this compound inequality. All right, so do you know how to solve this? Well, hopefully you do. And if you do not, well, real quick, if you want my best math instruction, you definitely got to check out my full courses Again, you can find links to these in the description of this video, but they span basic math to advanced math and everything in between. Okay, so let's keep going with this problem, and don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. We have our lovely uh, linear inequality. Now, how do we solve uh, these? Uh, well, actually, this is a compound inequality, excuse me. Let me show you the difference real quick, okay? If I have something like 2x is less than 8, we would refer to this as a linear inequality. Uh, now, if we have a compound inequality, this is what we're talking about, like and and or statements. So this is a pretty big topic, but uh, this is where values are now in between two numbers, okay? This would be an and situation, okay, like this right here, a number is between uh, uh, five and 10, okay? Again, uh, this would be an example, again, of a compound inequality. But I could also write a situation like this. X is less than three and X is greater than eight, okay? So maybe we have some sort of situation where uh, this would be a representation of the solution, okay? This is an or situation. X is less than three or X is greater than eight. So you're dealing with and and or statements and in mathematics and inequality, these are called compound inequalities. Now, back to our problem, the way we solve compound inequalities is very similar to solving uh, linear equations, okay? So you gotta know how to solve equations in order to solve uh, compound inequalities. And effectively, what we wanna do is get that x in the middle, okay? x in the middle of um, you know, all by itself between these two inequality symbols. And we have to be very careful, particularly if there's like a negative sign in front of a coefficient of the x. So if we are dealing with a situation like this, what happens in this scenario? Now, I'm trying to teach you a lot quickly, but in this scenario, you have to be on full alert because anytime you multiply or divide all sides of an inequality by a negative number, the uh, inequality symbols reverse. Okay, and that is a huge thing. We're not dealing with that in this particular problem, but I could just as easily made this problem more complex. But anyways, be aware of that because um, it's a very typical error that students make um, when dealing with compound or linear inequalities. Okay, so here is our setup. So we're gonna solve this just like a uh, linear equation. And what we're gonna do, <clears throat> excuse me, is we're gonna subtract seven from 
all sides of the inequality. All right, so negative 3 minus 7, uh, 2x plus 7, we're going to subtract 7, and then 9 minus 7, and we're simply going to add down in a column manner. So negative 3 uh, minus 7 is, of course, negative uh, 10, and that's going to be in between this 2x plus 7. Now we just have our 2x by itself, and then 9 minus 7 is 2. Okay, so what do you think our next move is? Well, if you said, uh, I think we have to divide by 2, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you would be correct. So let's go ahead and take a look at that step right now. All right, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. Okay, and when I do that, we're going to end up with negative 5 is less than x is less than 1. Okay, now remember the problem. The problem said, or uh, the question was, uh, what are all possible values for x? Now, what is x? x is an integer. So you got to be careful here because uh, not all the numbers that are greater than negative 5 or less than 1 are solutions. It's only integers, and we could see this better on a graph. Okay, so here is uh, this right here um, expressed as a graph when x is an integer. Okay, so if we think, uh, but all the values between negative 5 and positive 1 are going to be this. We have negative 5. This is, you know, if I was to graph this, and if x was just any number, the actual graph would be a circle here or a parenthesis like this, and then a line going all the way over to 1. So in other words, 1 and negative 5 are not part of the solution. If this was less than or equal to and less than or equal to over here, then I would simply fill in uh, these um, circles. Again, I'm throwing a lot out of, uh, out to you because I want to make sure that you uh, are seeing some aspects of dealing with inequalities. And if, you know, if you're lost here, this is definitely, you know, I, uh, you know, telling you, hey, you need to review this topic. But anyways, the question is all possible values for x on the, and x, again, x is an integer. Okay, so what x, uh, integers do we have that are greater than negative 5 and less than 1? Well, we can kind of see it here, right? So greater than negative 5 and less than 1, we have negative 4. That's an integer. The next one is negative 3. The next one is negative 2. The next one is negative 1. And then 0, of course, is an integer as well. Okay, so this is how you solve this particular problem. And I try to kind of squeeze in some kind of additional instruction just because I am so you know, nervous that you're going to walk into your test or exam and I didn't kind of give you, you know, full value for this video, right? It is my objective to have you look like this, you know, in your math classes. And if you are a student, that is fantastic. I hope that you're getting some value from uh, these uh, videos. And if you want more help with this, again, you can check out all my stuff, um, all my different course links in the description. But I have like over 2,000 plus videos on my YouTube channel from basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So, you know, I want to be that math teacher that can help you out uh, so you'd never, ever give up in mathematics. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.